Welcome to St. Mary MacKillop Parish, Oran Park, for our celebration of Mass. From all of us here, we hope you're having a wonderful weekend, and we thank you for joining us for Mass. We are a Catholic parish which seeks to form disciples, you and me, who joyfully follow Jesus Christ in every aspect of our lives, to be people who embrace, serve, nourish, and respond to the needs of our neighbors, Mass will begin shortly, but I'd now like to spend a moment sharing some of our parish updates with you. While at every offering of the Holy Eucharist, we intercede for those who have died, in the Church's liturgical calendar, November is set aside as a special month to especially pray for our deceased loved ones and to have Masses offered for them. If you would like a Mass offered for your deceased relatives and friends, please write their names on an envelope and drop the envelope into the, the secure metal letterbox outside our temporary parish office, located on the northern side of our Oran Park Mass Center. Alternatively, you can use the Your Parish Giving link on our parish website to make a Mass offering and to write the names of those for whom you would like a Mass offered in the section that's marked Reason for Donation. Due to COVID-19 protocols that restrict the numbers that can gather for Mass, we are unable to have Masses on All Souls Day this year. However, more information on ways we can pray both for those who have died and for the bereaved will be announced next weekend. The finish line is in sight. If all goes to plan, the project to extend our Southern Mass Center at Oran Park will soon be completed and the builders will hand over the keys. It was hoped that the project would have been completed earlier, but owing to delays with building projects, products and the like, this wasn't possible. We now envisage that the first Masses in our Southern Mass Centre that will be open to parishioners and guests will be on the weekend of the 7th and 8th of November. More information on how to pre-register for these 5 p.m. Saturday Vigil and 10 a.m. Sunday Masses at Oran Park, along with our 8 a.m. Sunday Mass at Leppington, will be announced in next week's edition of our e-newsletter and via our parish social media. In the meantime, don't forget that you can pre-register to attend our 9.30 a.m. Mass on Sunday the 1st of November at our Northern Mass Centre at Leppington by accessing the Eventbrite link on our parish website. Over coming weeks, our young parishioners who've prepared for their first reconciliation will receive this sacrament of God's mercy for the first time. Due to the COVID-19 protocols for churches and schools, the children who attend St. Justin's Primary and St. Gregory's Junior School will receive their first reconciliation with their class groups during school time on their respective school campuses. Those children who attend other schools will receive an update this week on the dates and times for them to receive their first reconciliation. Also, during this week, those families whose children were enrolled and prepared during 2020 for the Sacrament of First Communion will receive an update on the dates and times for our First Holy Communion Masses. During these days, when we cannot gather in large numbers to celebrate Mass, Along with this live stream mass, we are encouraging in the spirit of our vision to find ways to nourish our faith, such as participating in our next one-off faith formation session that will be presented this Thursday, the 29th of October at 7 p.m. by Paul Power. Paul has worked for many years at the St. Vincent de Paul Society, particularly in the area of social justice. For a number of years now, he has been the Chief Executive Officer of the Refugee Council of Australia. The Zoom link for this session can be found 
in the description for this Mass and in a recent post on our parish Facebook page. Well now, it's time for Mass. To get the most out of our Mass, to truly prepare yourself, we encourage you to sit, stand, kneel, sing, do all the things you might normally do in a church building. If you're new or it's been a while, just try to bring yourself to a place of stillness and be present to everything that's going on, knowing that we're all connected wherever we are, whichever device we're participating on through our one loving God. I invite you now, if you can, to please stand and join in our gathering song, Come and Set Us Free. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, the love of Jesus, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with, with your spirit. My dear friends, as we gather for this live stream mass around this altar, we bring our needs and intentions before Jesus. We, as always, continue to pray for those affected by COVID-19, those caring for them, and doctors, nurses, researchers that are searching for a vaccine. We also commend to the Lord as always, those that have gone before us marked with the sign of faith. Especially during this mass, we pray for the repose of the soul of Colin Vella, whose seventh anniversary occurs at this time. And we also offer this mass for Carlo and Lena Bonara and John Liska. We remember them in our prayer, along with the many prayers that we hold within our hearts, as we call to mind our need of God's abiding mercy. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. 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 Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope and charity and make us love what you command so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Tell the sons of Israel this, You must not molest the stranger or oppress him, for you lived as strangers in the land of Egypt. You must not be harsh with the widow or with the orphan. If you are harsh with them, they will surely cry out to me and be sure I shall hear their cry. My anger will flare, and I shall kill you with the sword. Your own wives will be widows, your own children orphans. If you lend money to any of my people, to any poor man among you, you must not play the usurer with him. You must not demand interest from him. If you take another's cloak as a pledge, you must give it back to him before sunset. It is all the covering he has. It is the cloak he wraps his body in. What else would he sleep in? If he cries to me, I will listen, for I am full of pity. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. I love you, Lord, my strength. I love, I love you, you Lord, Lord, my strength. I love you, Lord, my strength, my rock, my fortress, my saviour. My God is the rock where I take refuge, my shield, my mighty help, my stronghold. The Lord is worthy of all praise. When I call, I am saved from my foes. I, I love, love you, Lord, Lord my strength. strength. Long life to the Lord, my rock. Praised be the God who saves me. He has given great victories to his king and shown his love for his anointed. I love, I love you, Lord, Lord my, my strength. strength. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. You observed the sort of life we lived when we were with you which was for your instruction, and you were led to become imitators of us and of the Lord. And it was with the joy of the Holy Spirit that you took to the gospel, in spite of the great opposition all round you. This has made you the great example to all believers in Macedonia and Achaia, since it was from you that the word of the Lord started to spread. And not only throughout Macedonia and Achaia, for the news of your faith in God has spread everywhere. We do not need to tell other people about it. Other people tell us how we started the work among you, how you broke with idolatry when you were converted to God and became servants of the real living God and how you are now waiting for Jesus, his Son, whom he raised from the dead, to come from heaven to save us from the retribution which is to come. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. love me will keep my words and my father will love them and we will come to them
The Lord be with you. And And with your your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they got together and to disconcert him, one of them put a question. Master, which is the greatest commandment of the law? Jesus said, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second resembles it. You must love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang the whole law and the prophets also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. As any of you who are parents or grandparents or carers of children know firsthand, every parent, even if they think they're a saint, has a breaking point. Even a parent who can tolerate endless noise, outrageous disobedience from their children, will probably finally express some point their emotion that's in them. And in this weekend's first reading taken from the book of Exodus, God tells us, in a sense, what God's breaking point is. For as we see and as we've heard, God's breaking point has to do with those people who in the scriptures were called aliens and orphans. As you and I know firsthand from the ongoing national and international debates regarding asylum seekers and refugees, that we're going to have the privilege this Thursday to hear more about from Paul Power, as Kevin mentioned to us at the beginning of this live stream mass in one of our latest faith formation opportunities via Zoom. Some people do live as strangers in a strange land, others as aliens in their own communities, while many lack love and care. They are like orphans alone, without a home. Now, clearly you and I might suppose that these aliens and orphans using the words of the scriptures are easy to recognize. But as they say, people rarely are so transparent. For there can be aliens and orphans, again using those scriptural words, among the rich and powerful, just as there can be those who live at home in love among the poor. You just don't know. But here is what we do know, sisters and brothers, from the first reading. And that is, if you and I make someone cry to God, we're told, someone who lives as an orphan or an alien, God will lose patience with us. Now, I don't know about you, but my first hearing of that makes me think, should we be anxious or scared of God? Rather the opposite. I think in many ways these words from the book of Exodus should make us watchful of the way in which we treat any one of God's children. Now clearly as this month of October, often referred to as Mission Month, reminds us, being watchful of the way in which we treat others as children of God does call us to do all we can to reach out to those who need financial and spiritual support in the work of the missionary church. But at the same time, I think this month, and more specifically, the readings and prayers of this weekend's Mass, remind us that to be watchful of the way in we treat others as children of God calls us also to never forget those in our own backyard. In other words, using a quote attributed to that great saint of social justice, St. Vincent de Paul, we must be people who in our parish, in our homes, our workplaces, our schools, always prefer the service of others to everything else. 
In this weekend's gospel that Deacon Sam proclaimed for us, a man asked Jesus which commandment in the law is the greatest. And Jesus, using the words of scripture, says the greatest commandment is one's love of God, a neighbor. Now, clearly on face value, one could say that Jesus is reminding us that one way we express our love for God is by loving our neighbor. And that's true. But at the same time, I think when we reflect on the gospel in the light of the other readings from this weekend's liturgy, especially this reading from the book of Exodus, I think we're also being reminded that loving our neighbor means more than simply being kind to our friends and relatives. Loving one's neighbor means doing right by any widow and orphan, again, using those scriptural terms. In other words, loving one's neighbor means actually expanding our neighborhood to include all those who are so often pushed not only to the fringes of our society, but maybe too to the fringes of our own lives, of our own hearts. You know, as well as I do, that such a task has not been easy. Some might even say impossible this year when due to social distancing requirements and COVID-19 protocols, we haven't been able to reach out to others as we may like to. And even some of those great initiatives we've had in our parish over the last five years, such as Do Something Sunday, we've been unable to have these as touchstone moments for us to remember that line in our vision that calls us to respond to the needs of our neighbours wherever they may be. But as this weekend scriptures reminds us, no matter if we're in a time of pandemic or not, you and I must find creative ways to reach out to others. For to do less is to keep us from singing with joy the words of the psalmist, I love you, Lord, my strength. May I encourage you and in turn encourage me to really think about what are some creative ways especially in this final part of the year, as we prepare for Christmas, that we can expand our neighborhood in a COVID safe way. Maybe it's something like making sure that we buy and support local from local business. It might be thinking about some of those organizations that we did have as Do Something Sunday initiatives, making a contribution to their ministry online, or dropping round if we are able, again, through the COVID safe protocols, to visit some of these organisations, such as Mother Hubbard's Cupboard in Eldersley, or to call in or to support in some way the St Vincent de Paul Society, or again, other ministries and works connected, such as the House of Welcome, or other avenues that support refugees and asylum seekers. May the, we this week allow the challenge, and I think it is a challenge, of this weekend's readings to guide us. May we be not afraid this week to strive to be people who are like the ones that we hear in the letter from St. Paul that we proclaim this weekend. People who are known for our example and our good works. As we know, if there's one person dear to many of our hearts, who truly lived out the message of this weekend's readings, it's our own beloved patron, St. Mary of the Cross MacKillop. Let's turn to her once more. Let's call upon her example that all of us truly may live out Jesus' challenge in today's gospel. May we do all we can to respond to the needs of our neighbours wherever they may be. If you are able, I invite you now to stand and to join with me as using the words of the Apostles' Creed, we renew our commitment of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My dear friends, Jesus in this weekend's Gospel taught his disciples, that's you and me, to love God and our neighbour. Let us approach God in love with the concerns we hold in our hearts. For the Church, that the warmth and mercy seen in Pope Francis, in his words and in his actions, will inspire all Christians to live with the same spirit as they strive to love God and to love their neighbour. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people whose lives are traumatised by climate devastation, conflict, natural disasters and communicable diseases, as well as those who are persecuted for their Christian faith, that God will hear their cry and through the Holy Spirit, those working in charitable organisations may be able to promote justice and to uphold human dignity. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For the students currently sitting their HSC exams, that they continue to allow God to guide them, and that they have the grace to believe in themselves. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, particularly those affected by the coronavirus, as well as those working towards achieving a vaccine and those working to contain outbreaks, that God's healing love may renew and strengthen them. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For all teachers and people working in schools, that God will strengthen and guide them as they seek to be instruments of God's healing love. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially those in our families and those who have died in tragic circumstances, that they may now see God in heaven, face to face. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, our strength, our rock, our fortress and our deliverer, Look with love upon us, your people, who love you, and grant our prayers, spoken and unspoken, through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, may the Lord, Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray together one of the Eucharistic prayers for use in masses for various needs that mirrors and reflects many of the thoughts captured in this weekend's gospel. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners. And he became a neighbour to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your daughters and sons. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which shall be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and 
and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favour on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Brian Mascord, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters, Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labour and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the blessed Virgin Mary, mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Mary of the Cross MacKillop, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Along with Colin Vella, Carlo and Lena Bonara, John Liska, there are many that we remember, those that have gone before us, and members of our family and friends here on earth that we hold dear in this Mass. Let us bring them all together as one in our prayer, for at the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name, thy, thy kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit.
Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We're reminded by God's word that where two or three are gathered in the Lord's name, even virtually, the Lord is here in our midst. So I invite you now to join with me as we pray together our prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Having listened to the saving word of our God, having prayed together this Eucharistic prayer and having made our act for spiritual communion, I invite you as always to just spend a moment now with me in silent prayer as we praise and thank God for the gift of his son Jesus present among us through word and sacrament. I invite you now to join with me as we pray and sing our song of praise. You are higher than all of our questions. You are deeper than all of our needs. Wider than all that we can imagine. You are greater than anything. You are holy, holy God Almighty, God with us. You are holy, holy God Almighty, God with us, God with us. stronger than all of our burdens. You are sweeter than all of our dreams, closer than all the air that surrounds us. You are greater than anything.
Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs, we may one day possess in truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As any of you who have built a family home will probably know firsthand, you always have a great dream and hope of when the project's going to be completed. But there's always a few curveballs that come along the way. And even during this time of COVID-19, building products and other things haven't always been available at the right time. And other challenges are faced when builders and others continue or start a project. And so has been the case with another home, and that's our Oran Park Mass Centre. But as Kevin reminded us in the Before Mass Notices this evening, we can see and we look forward to that finish line when we'll be able to be welcome each other back into this home, our Southern Mass Centre, and to also to look forward to a changed Mass program where people, fellow parishioners and guests will be able to join us for the Saturday 5pm Vigil Mass that still will be live streamed, our 10am Sunday Mass here at Oran Park, but also to our regular 8am Mass time that we've been celebrating over many years at our Northern Mass Centre at Leppington. But I really ask you to join with me and members of our parish leadership team who have been working really hard behind the scenes to look at our re-entry process together into our liturgical space of the Southern Mass Centre and also our re-entry as a parish as COVID-19 protocols change. I invite you to join with us as we continue to ask our beloved patron, St. Mary of the Cross MacKillop, to pray with us and for us during this time. Also too, as some of you may have seen through our parish social media, one of our fellow parishioners, Peter Sidgraves, the member for Camden, our local state member, in one of his community mentions recently in state parliament, stood up on the floor of parliament and recalled and mentioned the 10th anniversary of the canonization of St. Mary MacKillop. But as part of that, Peter also mentioned that we as a parish have Mary MacKillop and her name as part of our life and as part of our vision. So I want to thank our local member of parliament, Peter Sidgraves, for mentioning our parish, but also too, I think in mentioning our parish, named in honour of St. Mary MacKillop, Peter was also reminding us that we are called, just like the Church of Thessalonica in tonight's second reading, to be an example and good news to parishes across our diocese, across our nation, around the world, to be an example and good news to one another. So once again, let us continue to strive for that through our prayer for one another. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Bow your heads for the blessing. May the effects of your sacred blessing, O Lord, make themselves felt among your faithful to prepare with spiritual sustenance the minds of all, that they may be strengthened by the power of your love to carry out works of charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth in peace and proclaim the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The sun.